my word, I thought he was going to fly straight into me there. Hello, and welcome to DDTV, the TV station especially for you. And we've got some great things coming up. In a few minutes, Dragonori, and the story is going to be read for us by the very famous Mr. Noel Edmonds, who uh, misses. There'll also be news of our special competition later in the programme, and of course we have the first ever exciting episode of You Can Do It. It's all happening here on Desmond Dragon TV. Now that reminds me, where is that Desmond Dragon? I saw him fly past me a minute ago and he took my head off, but he's supposed to be here doing this with me. Desmond, Desmond, where are you? Ooh, ooh, ouch. Desmond, come out from under there. Oh. And be careful, with all that steam, you nearly singed all the hairs off my legs. <laughs> and there aren't many. <laughs> Sorry, Andy. What are you doing under there anyway? Oh, I was just looking for my inhaler. It's a blue one. It fell out of my pocket when I was loop the looping. <laughs> I don't need it right now, but I might do if I get out of puff or if I start coughing. So what does the inhaler actually do? Well, the blue inhaler is my reliever. It opens up the little tubes in my lungs when they get tight so that I can breathe easily again. But Dr. Goodrum, uh, he's my dragon doctor, you know, uh, told me that if I start needing to use it more than once a day, I must go back and see him again. I see. So it's sort of like a backup supply. Yeah, that's right. Uh, just in case I need it. <laughs> I have another inhaler too, my Preventer. Your Preventer? Now what's that for? The Preventer helps to dampen down the swelling in my airway tubes, uh, so they're not all red and puffed up and blocked inside. It helps to look after my lungs. So it sounds like a very important job for that inhaler. Now mm. when do you use it? Oh, uh, every morning when I get up and every evening just before bedtime. Oh, so I expect that having asthma means that you have to take great care. You know, take things really easy. There are bound to be certain things that you can't do. <laughs> what rubbish! Just because I've got asthma, it doesn't mean that I can't be like everyone else, now that I've been given the right medicine to take. I take it every day when I should do, just mm -hmm. like Dr. Goodrum told me to, Good. so I can do whatever I want. Do you understand, Andy? No, not really. Well... I don't get a tight chest or a cough, mm -hmm. and I don't have trouble breathing anymore because I use my inhalers. So it's almost as if that the asthma's gone. Ah, uh, now that's what I used to think. You see, it was Easter holidays, yeah. and I've been having on, a brilliant Desmond, time Desmond, on my bike. Desmond, Desmond, please, what? I haven't got time for your Easter holiday stories oh. because we've got to watch Dragonori. And, oh, good, because that's what I'm trying to explain. Still, let's let Noel do it, shall we? Watch this, and perhaps you'll understand. OK, Desmond. Here is Mr. Noel Edmonds with today's Dragonori. Hooray! Squadron leader Desmond. Desmond Dragon hitched his school bag over his shoulder and gave a joyful whistle. Dragons sound like that when they whistle because they blow steam at the same time. Desmond was happy. He felt good. Great. Brilliant. He'd almost forgotten that he'd ever been poorly with asthma. Thanks to the inhaler medicine that Goodrum, the wizard doctor to dragons, had given him, he could now do all the things that other young dragons could do. He felt so well that during the holidays, with so many things going on, he'd often forgotten to take his brown inhaler each day. He'd begun to think he didn't really need inhalers anymore anyway. When he got to school, the first lesson was dragon history, about how dragons had once been ferocious creatures until someone called George had changed them into the gentle creatures that they are today. Afterwards, Desmond and his friends went to the school field with their sports teacher, Mr. Carefilly Dragon. Now then, young dragons, he said, I'm going to pick the new Red Dragon School Steam Trail Flying Team. And all the young dragons called out, Can I be in it? I'm a good flyer. Me, please, sir. And things like that. Steam trail flying is a big sport with dragons. They fly in formation behind a leader and they blow trails of steam from their noses which form the most wonderful patterns in the sky. Mr. Carefully Dragon picked some of the team and then he looked at Desmond. I think with your asthma, it'll be a bit too much for you, Desmond. Desmond was really disappointed. I'm fine now, sir, he said. Give me a chance and I'll prove it, I promise. Desmond's a marvellous flyer, said Nita, one of Desmond's best friends. Oh, very well, agreed Mr. Carefully Dragon. If you're sure, you'll be all right. A 
And when he saw how pleased Desmond was, he added, and you can be leader, squadron leader. Great, thank you, said Desmond, and led the team out ready for takeoff. For the first time for ages, he was just a, a bit out of breath, and his chest felt tight and squeaky. Nervous, I expect, he said to himself, and then the whistle blew. And they all flapped their wings and were soon up in the sky, puffing out ribbons of steam. It looked absolutely great. But poor old Desmond was having to puff like mad just to keep the steam going. And what with flying as well was having real trouble trying to get his breath. He led the team up until they were 30 feet in the sky, which is pretty high for dragons. They're not what you might call high flyers. But Desmond was getting very tired. His steam trail spluttered, and he didn't have enough puff to keep his wings flapping. Oh, I can't fly anymore. He wheezed and fell to the ground with a bump. Mr. Carefilly Dragon dashed over to him. You all right, Desmond? He asked, looking very worried. Yes, thank you, Desmond gasped, rubbing a bruised claw. You'd better forget about being in the team, Desmond. What with your asthma and that, said Mr. Carefully. Still, not the end of the world, is it? But as far as Desmond was concerned, it was. He watched his teacher guide in the leaderless team and then walked home very slowly and very sadly. That night, his dad could see there was something wrong. You all right, lad, he asked. Not really, dad, replied Desmond miserably and told him all about his rotten day and how he'd got puffed out and what his teacher had said about his asthma and everything. Mr. Dragon said, that's settled it. We'll take you to see Goodrum tomorrow. Desmond and his mum and dad called on Goodrum. What's the problem, eh? Asked the wizard doctor. Desmond had not finished telling him before Goodrum said, stop, it's clear what has happened. You have not been using your inhalers as I told you to, have you, Desmond? Desmond hung his head and shook it. You've forgotten sometimes, haven't you? Desmond nodded. And you thought it didn't matter because you were feeling so well, didn't you? Desmond nodded again. Then in a kind voice, Goodrum said, Never mind, let's see what we can do to put things right. Last time, I told you how the airways in your chest are like tubes, and when someone gets asthma, these tubes can get all puffed up and swollen. Remember? Yes, said Desmond. And the hole running through them gets smaller and makes it hard to breathe. And my chest feels tight and makes a wheezy sound. That's right, smiled Goodrum. And the brown inhaler medicine is the one that helps to dampen down all that swelling and puffiness in your tube. Brown keeps the asthma down, and blue helps the air through, said Desmond. The brown one's the preventer, and the blue one's the reliever. Yes, that's right, Desmond, smiled Goodrum. But you must keep taking the preventer inhaler every morning and every evening. Otherwise, the swelling and puffiness might not be treated properly. And this may lead to some damage inside your airway tube. I was silly to stop taking it, said Desmond. But I forgot and... Uh, easily done, interrupted Goodrum. So how can we help you remember? Um, do you find it helpful keeping the inhaler by your toothbrush? Oh, yes, I do, Dr. Goodrum, said Desmond. But sometimes I forget to clean my teeth, so then I forget my inhaler. I always clean my teeth after Desmond, said Desmond's mum. I could double check that he's used his brown inhaler. Oh, mum, groaned Desmond. I don't need you to check up on me. Your mum wouldn't really be checking up on you, Desmond, smiled Goodrum. Remember, two heads are better than one. Oh, okay then, said Desmond. From then on, Desmond used his inhalers properly and after two or three weeks was feeling well again. On the day of the steam trail display, he was just wishing his school Red Dragon team good luck when Mr. Carefilly Dragon came running up very distressed. Oh, dear, 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 dearie me, he wailed. Terrible, terrible news. 
David Dragon, your leader, has gone down with fly and can't flu. I mean flu and can't fly. We're finished. Finished. Can I take his place? Asked Desmond. I've watched the team practice. I know what to do. Yes, let Desmond do it, cried the friends. No, 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 said Mr. Carefully. You know what happened last time. Oh, but I hadn't been using my inhalers properly last time, said Desmond. I'm fine now. But you've got asthma, snapped Mr. Carefully. Yes, but because I'm using my inhalers properly, I don't get out of breath like I used to, said Desmond. Please, give me a chance. Oh, all right, said the teacher. But don't blame me if... But squadron leader Desmond had already taken his place at the head of the Red Dragons, and soon they were up in the sky in perfect formation and into their steam trail routine. How do you feel, Desmond? called Nita as they came out of a loop. Terrific, replied Desmond. Let's go for a double spiral, shall we? Yeah, cried Nita. Desmond led them up to 60 feet. Yes, 60. And they spiraled towards the ground. Halfway down, they leveled out, went up again, turned and started downwards. The crowd gasped in amazement. Then, to cap it all, Desmond took a deep breath and puffed out a trail of blue steam. Well, twist my tail, said Mr. Carefully. How did he do that? Easy, said Desmond's dad. I taught him to drink lots of blackcurrant juice before you fly. When the Red Dragons had landed and everyone had finished clapping, Mr. Carefully said, well done, Desmond. I didn't think anyone with asthma could do anything like that. How did you do it? I had a little help from my preventer, said Desmond. <laughs> I think I should be called the preventer, said Mr. Carefully Dragon. I nearly prevented you from taking part, but now I know you can do whatever you want, just like the others. And Desmond said quietly, Good old Goodrum. <coughs> Desmond, what a fantastic flyer you are. Say thank you to Uncle Noel. Uh, thank you, Noel. Thank you very much, Noel. Yes, not a bad flyer, eh, for someone with asthma who should take it easy and not overdo things, hmm? Yes, all right, all right. I was wrong. I didn't understand. You see, when I was at school, okay, there were still boys and girls who always couldn't do things in my class because they had asthma. They weren't allowed to do all the running around and stuff because they were constantly running out of breath. Yes, but that was hundreds of years ago. I'll have less of your cheek, young man. It wasn't hundreds of years ago at all. <laughs> Oh, well, it was quite a long time ago. Well, however long ago it was, things are much better now. Yeah, but I still hear from people who have asthma today, and they say that they run out of breath and wake up during the night coughing. Well, perhaps they're not using their inhalers properly, so the medicine isn't getting to where it's needed, or uh, perhaps they need to go back to their doctor so that he can check that the medicine he gave them is still the right one. Ah, talking of which, mm -hmm. is this the inhaler that you were looking for earlier? Oh, yes, it is. Thanks, Andy. I'm glad you found it, because after all my squadron leader flying, I'm a bit out of puff. <laughs> will you help me with it, Andy? Uh, of course I will. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Okay, That's open right. wide. Right. Breathe in. Oh, oh yes. That's better. <laughs> well, you obviously know how to use your inhaler properly, Desmond, don't you? Yes, Dr. Goodrum taught me. There are several different types of inhaler gadgets, though, Andy. Ah, you mean like the ones that we've been sent here. Look, there's lots of different ones that people have drawn for oh, us. Yes, yes, uh, yes, just like those. And it's very important that you know how to use your particular inhaler gadget properly. Then the medicine can get to work where it's needed. You see, there are still a lot of people who think they just have to put up with asthma. Mm. But it's not true. With all the good medicines around these days, they can enjoy themselves like all the other children without their asthma getting in the way. Yes, you're right. In fact, you're so clever. Oh, I mean, you. it's all right. I pay compliments all the time, don't I? Yes, I mean, I pay you money. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> I mean, look at the children in today's You Can Do It challenge. Liam, Natalie, Tom and little Hannah. Look, Tom sent us a picture. Oh, it's very good. A hedgehog with a tail. A hedgehog with a tail. No, it's you, silly. Oh, I'm not sure I like Tom anymore. No, but I suppose you do look a bit like a hedgehog with a tail, don't you? Oh, all right. They then. told DDTV about their asthma and how proud they are that it doesn't get in the way anymore. This is what happens if you're not using your inhalers properly, or if you don't use them as the doctor <laughs> told you to. You can't join in with your friends and all their fun and games because you always get out of breath. 
If it gets really bad, you have to miss school. Some children even end up in hospital. This is how they used to be. You should see them now, but the right inhalers and medicines have been sorted out for each of them by their doctor, and they have been taught how to use them properly. You see, Desmond, like you, they all have asthma, but it doesn't get in the way of them having a good time. Oh, are they able to do a lot more? Do a lot more? They're amazing. <laughs> amazing enough to beat the You Can Do It challenge, Andy. Well, let's see. In our super special, extraordinary edition of You Can Do It. Quick, get your 3D glasses. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, I've got yours. <laughs> Welcome to You Can Do It, one of the roughest, toughest, fastest, funniest, messiest competitions in the world. And with me today I have four young people who've all spoken to Andy and who all reckon that they can beat the You Can Do It challenge. So let's waste no more time and let's meet those four daring dudes. And here they are now. We have Liam, who is ten, Natalie, who is eight, Tom, who is seven, and little Hannah. Come on, Hannah. How old are you? Three. Three, that's fabulous. Uh, well, first of all, welcome all of you to You Can Do It. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah. Great, OK. Well, let's, um, let's explain the game to you first, all right? It's your task to answer a number of different questions about asthma. But seeing as you're all experts, OK, that shouldn't be too difficult. Now, once you've answered the question correctly, you will go on to do a physical challenge, all right? And you won't be able to go on to the next round until you've got that right. So, there are three rounds. So, do you think you are brave and bright enough to beat the You Can Do It challenge? Yeah. Yes! OK! Well, let's waste no more time and let's play You Can Do It! Come on, let's go! Right, now the first thing you have to look for with asthma are the signs and signals that tell you that you might have asthma. So your first question, everybody, is about these signs. Now, I want each of you to tell me one of the signs of asthma. OK, starting with you, Tom. Finding it difficult to breathe. That's right, yes. Asthma does sometimes make it difficult for you to breathe. Hannah, can you tell me one of the signs and signals of asthma? Coughing. That's right, yes. You do sometimes get a cough with asthma. OK, Natalie, one of the signs and signals. Making a sort of wheezing noise when you breathe. That's right, that's another one of the signs. OK, and finally, Liam. Feeling like your chest is tight. That's right, correct. Blast! That means you've got it all right, which means you can go on to your first physical challenge. Now, all you have to do here is to blow up a balloon. Easy enough, eh, Hannah? But sometimes, with asthma, the tubes that go to your lungs get smaller and it makes it more difficult for you to breathe. Like this one here, you see? Now, let's say your lungs are like this balloon. Now, here's a narrow tube, and here's a wide tube. Now, your challenge here is to see which one of these makes it easier for you to blow up the balloon. OK? Right, Tom, let's toss for it. And so we see who gets the wide one and who gets the narrow one. Cool. Heads. Heads, Heads it is. Botheration. That means you win, which means you get the wide tube and I get the narrow tube. So, OK, we've got 30 seconds to blow up our balloons, starting from now. This is balloon. Well, the kids are doing quite well at this stage, taking nice deep breaths and blowing as hard as they can. As you can see, the wide tube does make it much easier to get the air into the balloons. But just look how difficult it is to get that air through that narrow tube. That's what happens when your tubes are all swollen and puffed up, just like when you have asthma. Mike's having a tough time with that narrow tube, but Liam, Natalie, Tom and Hannah certainly seem to have got the air through quick enough and not a cough or a wheezy chest from any of them. Okay, okay, time up. Oh, now I know what it feels like to have asthma. Okay, right, well, let's see how you've done. Oh, fantastic. Oh, Tom, you've let yours down, but I saw you did brilliantly. Natalie, you've blown up yours, and well done, Liam, you've blown yours up so much that it's burst. Look at that. And Hannah, yours popped right across there. Well, that's fantastic. Okay, but there are still two challenges to go. So let's see how you get on in challenge number two, okay? Yes! OK, well, here we are at challenge number two of You Can Do It. Now, we've all seen how well you can blow up balloons, but your question for this round, which any of you can answer if you know it, is what things does a doctor use to tell how well you can blow air out of your lungs? Do you want to talk amongst yourselves? Liam? Peak flow meter. That's right, a peak flow meter. <laughs> Yes, now here in fact is a peak flow meter. Uh, this is the one that's used by children. And uh, 
Here's the one that's used by mums and dads. Now, it's quite simple. All you have to do is you take a really deep breath and you blow hard into this end so, we can, so the doctor can see just how much puff you've got. Now, if I reset that, let's have a go. <gasps> oh, not bad, a record. <laughs> Great. Right, now, you've all used one of these, haven't you? Yeah. Yes, yes. Tom, have you used it? Yes. Yeah? You have to, you, you have to use it three times. Right, OK. Natalie? I use one at home, Mark, how will I do on a chart? All oh, right, I see, so you can uh, take it with you to the asthma clinic when you go. Yes, good. OK, well, of course, you have to blow really hard, which is what you're going to have to do in this next game, because for our second challenge, you are going to play blow football. Yeah! Now, on one side will be you, the You Can Do It challengers, and on the other side will be the greatest blow footballer in the world, me. <laughs> so you have 45 seconds to see if you can score more goals than the world champion. Right, so pick up those blowpipes and let's start puffing! Yes, indeed, and what a marvellous game of blow football we have for you today. Oh, there's the first goal. The challengers have taken the lead. Uh, the, well, what a turn up for the books, that is. And uh, Mike doesn't seem too pleased about that. Absolutely awful, I must say. Uh, the challengers are scoring nearly every time they get the ball. Oh, they may have asthma, but it certainly doesn't seem to be making any difference to their game. Uh, you can tell that they have been to see their doctors regularly and been using their inhalers as they should be, which shows that they can suck as well as blow if needs be. Uh, but it's all blows here. Uh, mostly blows for Mike's hopes of remaining world champion, I think. Oh, yes, just look at that score with just a few seconds left. And, oh, yes, there, there, in fact, goes the final whistle. Well, what a game. Yes, yes, all right, all right. So it was beginner's luck. Somebody blocked up my tube. Perhaps it needs a preventer inhaler. Yes, all right, clever class. OK, then, right. Well, let's see how you get on in our final challenge. Yeah. OK, well, here we are at the final challenge. Now, I have to ask you a question before you can go for the physical challenge. Your question is, what should you do if you wake up at night coughing and you start getting short of breath again? Anybody go, know? Go to the doctor. That's right. Yeah. OK, you can do the physical challenge, right. In the physical challenge, I will ask you each a challenge question. If you get it right, you dash across here and you grab one of these balloons filled with water. You then take it across to the lovely Susie, who will place it in this basket at the end of this seesaw. That will make the point, which is down here. Get higher and higher and higher until it bursts the sack. Your challenge is to try and burst the sack in one minute. Do you think you can do it? OK, well, let's play the final challenge. Right, Liam, your question first. What do you think is going to happen if you forget to use your inhaler? You might start coughing and waking up in the night and you'll be tired the next day. That's right, OK, grab a balloon. Come on, Liam. That's it. Pass it to Susie. Excellent. OK, right. Tom, same question. What do you think is going to happen if you forget to use your inhaler? Your, your lungs might get down to your side. That's absolutely right. Grab a balloon. Come on. That's it, Tom. Go for it. Carefully, carefully. Right, good. OK, Natalie, same question. Your asthma might get worse and you won't be able to run about as much as your friends. That's right, grab a balloon! Yes, come on! A nice big one. That's it. Carefully, carefully, carefully. OK, Hannah, Hannah, do you think you'll be able to use your inhaler properly all the time? Yeah. Yes, and if you don't remember, then your mummy and daddy remind you. And if they forget, you can remind them. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, well done. OK, well, grab a balloon. Come on, I'll give you a hand. Which one are we going to choose? A nice big one. Nice big one. Here, look. Will you take that one? I'll take this one. That's it. Grab it. Here we go. Oh, well done. Right. Take it across to Susie. That's lovely. Here we go. Susie and this one. OK, right. Final question for all of you. Do you think you can beat the You Can Do It Challenge? Yes. Right, everybody, grab a balloon. Come on. Come on. Let's get this point up. Heavier. Heavier. It's going up. It's going up. Come on. Come on. Yes, finally. Hannah. Brilliant. Oh, Excellent, yeah. eh? Well done, Liam, Natalie, Tom, and especially Nicole Hannah. We like her a lot, don't we? Yes. Weren't they great? Yes, they were. I'd like to have a go at some of those challenges. Well, you can certainly have a go at the You Can Do It competition if you like. Mm -hmm. You two at home can do the same. All you have to do is enter our competition, get a special entry form, and then the rest is up to you when you answer the quick quiz questions on the form. Um, are there any prizes? 
I knew you were going to ask that. Yes, there are <laughs> loads of prizes. Oh, wow, where do I get my entry form from? Well, you've got one already. Have and I? guess where it's hidden? Where? In here. Oh. All you have to do is pull out the video cover from the case, tear off the entry form, fill it in, and post it to us. You see, Desmond, couldn't be simpler. No. And you know what? We've come to the end of DDTV. Have you enjoyed it? You bet. Go on, then, ask me, ask me. Oh. Have you enjoyed it, Andy? Yeah, I've loved every minute of it. <laughs> and I've learnt a lot, you see. I've learnt about asthma. I've learnt about visiting the doctor or nurse and how they can help you if you have asthma. Mm -hmm. I've learnt about peak flow meters. Yeah, and inhalers, preventers and relievers. Ah, but there is one thing that's bothering me, you see, Desmond. Yeah, what's that? Well, I reckon, because I'm so forgetful, mm -hmm. if I had to use my inhaler on a daily basis, I'd forget to take it. Yes, yes, a lot of people have that trouble. Th that's why I keep my inhaler by my toothbrush, to help me to remember to use it just before I clean my teeth. It, it's also important for mums and dads to help you check how many doses you've taken. Yeah, but I'm so stupid, I'd probably try to use my inhaler to clean my teeth. <laughs> I've also learned that if medicine stops working so well, you can just go back to the doctor and he'll check out that you're using the inhaler properly and see if you need to change your medicine. That's right. The doctor or nurse will check that the medicine is getting right to the place where it will do the business right. and make sure that your inhaler is the right one for you. Ah, but don't your mum and dad ever worry about you using your inhaler all the time? Well, they used to, Andy, but they saw what happened when I forgot to take it during my school holidays. Mm. My asthma got worse. Mm. And, see, Goodrum explained to my mum and dad that the good thing about taking medicine through inhalers is that they send very tiny amounts of medicine straight to where it's needed inside the airway tubes. It's such a little bit of medicine doing such a big job of keeping me well that generally there's no need to worry about using preventer inhalers every day. So my mum and dad now agree with Goodrum that it's better to take it than not to take it. Good point. Hmm. So it should be possible for nearly everybody with asthma to do all the usual things. Yeah. You know, run about and play games and take part in all sports, just like you. Yeah, uh, but I don't think they should try flying like me. No, 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 I think we'll leave flying to the experts. Yes. <laughs> Desmond, calm yourself, calm yourself, Desmond. Oh. You nearly messed up my shirt with all that steam, you know. <laughs> but a bit of messing up is fun, don't you think? Well. I, but I wouldn't mind even getting messed up like they did in You Can Do It. <laughs> well, yes, but um, all that gun, Jim. It's not Don't you like it? Well. Oh, that's a shame, because I've got a present for you from uh, You Can Do It, but I don't suppose you'll want it now. Well, if it's a present, and if you're going to force me, yeah. I'll take it. What is it? It's a balloon. Look, it's uh, behind you. Look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a really nice balloon, Desmond. Thank you very, very much indeed. Mm, that's all right. Um, yeah. Desmond, there is one thing about your balloon. Yes? It's a bit heavy. Is there something in it, maybe? Well, uh, actually, I've got another present for you, Andy. Two presents for me? Oh, what a lucky guy. Yes. What is that, then? It, it's a pin. Really? Yes, what here it for? is. Look. <laughs> Desmond, I suppose you think that's funny. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, quite funny. Sorry, Andy, I must fly. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Well, I'm going to leave you lot now to enjoy yourselves, but I'm sure... You You'll have a lot of pity for me. No, look, I'm in such a mess. Anyway, look, from myself and Desmond, bye-bye. Just got to go and catch him. Desmond? Desmond! <laughs>